Okay, G11, Bundeswehr final model that would have been issued. About a thousand of these were manufactured, um, non reach service, but were t trialed and tested. Interesting bullpup weapon. I'm not sure the ergonomics suit me, although I'd love to fire it. I'm not sure I'd like to carry it. The optics, again, made by Hensold. Um, Dynamite Nobel made the ammunition. Uh, rifle was made by Heckel and Koch, but the project was originally initiated by um, Mauserwerk. Okay, we have uh, ambidextrous selector come safety. We have safe, single shot. A single shot, the uh, action recoils in the stock but doesn't hit the rear buffer because it only partially recoils. In three shot burst, the action fires at a very high cyclic rate of over 2,000 rounds per minute, but the action buff doesn't hit the buffer until after three rounds have left the bore. This allows the recoil impulse, which is three times the individual recoil impulse, to hit the firer's shoulder only after the rounds have exited the barrel. In fully automatic, the buffer again doesn't disconnect, but the cyclic rate is only at 400 rounds per minute. Okay, here we have the G11 field stripped, and don't ask me to take it any further than this. As we can see, the firing mechanism is very complex, and this was supposed to be the final iteration of the gun. Field stripping and cleaning this in the field I think would be a nightmare. Perhaps it was meant for re rear echelon armourers. This is the final model that would have been issued to the Bundeswehr. About a thousand of these were made. This is a G11 K3. And here we have a dummy round. This dummy round, we can open it up and let you have a look. When ignited, there was an initiator pellet which pushed the bullet into the bore and then the rest of the casing, which was the propellant, was ignited and then pushed the bullet out at high pressure. As you can see, it is a very, very complex mechanism. A very interesting example of a um, advanced rifle program, uh, part of the ACR program in the US Army. Um, again, I'd like to thank the uh, Dutch Military Museum for giving me the chance to handle this example and to strip it. Hopefully at a later date, um, at another collection, we'll be able to fire it. And we'll have some very good slow motion footage of that as well. So thank you and we'll see you later. Meanwhile, here in England, we have a copy of the G11 ACR rifle that was used in the ACR rifle trials in the USA in the 1990s, which was eventually deemed as unsuccessful and no rifle was adopted. For those of you who missed the uh, last episode that I filmed on the G11 in the Dutch Military Museum, here is the internal workings of an HK G11. I think Singer, the sewing machine manufacturer, will be justifiably proud if he made this. It is such a complicated mechanism. And here is the other side of that operating mechanism, which is very complex. How that would actually fare in the field, I do not know. 
As we can see in this split screen view, the upper rifle, which was part of the ACR rifle trials in the USA, is marked caliber 4.92mm x 34. The lower rifle, which is a Bundeswehr test rifle, is marked caliber 4.73mm x 33mm. They are actually both the same caliber. The upper rifle is marked for the US convention of groove to groove. Uh, explanation of caliber and the chamber length is the uh, chamber length and not the cartridge length. The lower rifle, the Bundeswehr, uh, shows the European convention of uh, land to land and the actual cartridge length. In later videos, we'll be looking at the AAI ACR rifle, the Colt ACR rifle entry and this Steyr ACR rifle entry. It's interesting to note that during filming and research we found a source of cases ammo, so if anybody needs any, let us know, we'll put you in touch.